Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. Another topic under the uh, urinary elimination problems, which is your renal failure. In our previous video, we discussed one of the urinary elimination problem, which is your BPH or also known as your benign prostatic hyperplasia. So for this uh, today's video, we are going to discuss renal failure and this video will be divided into two portions because renal failure it actually comes in two types. We have your acute and your chronic type. Now, before we proceed to the discussion of acute renal failure, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And please don't forget to like this video, comment, and share this video to your friends as well. Renal failure, from the word itself, failure of the kidneys to work. Okay? Renal is your kidney. Failure is a dysfunctional kidney, in other words. This acute renal failure is also known as your acute tubular necrosis, renal parenchymal failure, and your acute tubular interstitial nephritis. So these are the names that are accepted as the other um, name that can be associated with acute renal failure. Okay, acute renal failure in comparison to your chronic renal failure is that acute renal failure are commonly reversible. While your chronic renal failure are conditions or a failing kidney which is considered as irreversible, meaning it's going to be lifetime, it's uncurable. Okay, you will have the condition forever unless you will undergo surgical management which is your kidney transplant. Now, acute renal failure or reversible condition characterized by the following. Number one is a sudden reduction or cessation of renal function. So basically, nagkakaroon tayo ng oligoria to uh, anorea. So, kumunti ang ihe or walang ihe at all. Okay? So that's your oligoria to anorea. And uh, when you take uh, talk about oligoria, so the urine production is less than the normal level, which is 30 to 60 ml per hour. Okay? That is based on the glomerular filtration rate of 0.5 to 1 ml cc per minute. Another one is retention of waste products. So the retention of waste product is basically known as your uremia. And an increased concentration of these waste products in the blood is will be known as your azotemia. Okay, so again, huh? uremia is the increased concentration of waste products in the blood. And uh, that's the retention of waste products in the blood and an increased concentration of this is termed as azotemia. Another one is that there is a presence of increased BUN or blood urea you know, nitrogen and your creatinine level wherein kapag maayos po sana ang function ng ating kidney, this too should be a normal range. Now, what are the types of your acute renal failure? So your acute renal failure comes in three types depending now on the cause of the condition, okay? Number one is the pre-renal. From the word itself, pre-renal, before kidney. So pre-renal, before kidney, accounts 55% of all the cases that resulted now into your ARF or acute renal failure. So pre-renal, before kidney. So what are these conditions that may result to acute renal failure? So acute renal failure, pre-renal type, can happen if you have decreased blood flow to the kidney. So what are the conditions that may lead to decreased blood flow into the kidney? Such as your ano, hypovolemia. So if you have severe hemorrhage in the body. What else? Um, if you have decreased fluids in the body, which may also lead to hypovolemia. And other types of shock conditions that resulted now into decreased blood flow in the kidney, causing now failure of the kidney. Another one. Severe shock, congestive heart failure, hemorrhage, dehydration, and diuretic therapy are all conditions that can lead to the formation or to the development of acute renal failure. And it is considered pre-renal because this happens okay, before the kidney itself. So for example, the blood vessels that is supposedly uh, supplying Oxygen-rich blood into the kidney is not unable to perform its task or there is a decreased blood flow that should be going to the kidney. Okay, For perfusion, is hindi nagagawa ng maayos. That's why the kidney is failing. And since it happens prior the kidney, 
it is considered as pre-renal. And again, 55% of all the cases of acute renal failure are commonly related to pre-renal type of acute renal failure. The other type is your intrarenal. Intrarenal from the word itself, intra means in the. Okay? Ibig sabihin, the condition originates from the kidney itself. It happens in the renal cell or in the nephrons itself. Okay? What are examples naman ng mga condition na ito? Example is your paello nephritis. What else? Your glomerulo nephritis. Okay, and your trauma to the kidney. So basically, an infection in the suborgans or to the kidney itself. And if there is trauma to the kidney itself causing now the kidney to fail, that is an example of the intrarenal type of ARF. Okay, the third one is your postrenal. So kung meron tayo kanina ng prerenal, meron tayong uh, intrarenal, meron na tayong postrenal. So, if you try to think of your anatomy and physiology, so, anatomy and physiology, before the kidney, we have your blood vessels going to your kidney. After your kidney, we have the ureter, the bladder. Okay? Anything that's, any condition that starts from those structures of the reproductive or the genitourinary tract, okay, or system, would be considered as your postrenal failure. For example, Obstruction of of the urine to flow, okay? Obstruction of the urine to flow. For example, for benign prostatic hyperplasia, pag sobrang lala at totally compressed and black yung ating ureter, tendency the urine will backflow, go back na, goes back now into the kidney, causing now uh, infection in the kidney itself. And the condition is starts after the kidney. That's why it's post-renal, Okay? Strictures to these underlying tissues, your urethra and bladder can also relate to that. Urolithiasis. So, this is a stone in the ureter. Okay? Urolithiasis is stone in the ureter, ureter. So, when there is a stone in the ureter, as we all know, ureter is the passageway of kidney uh, uh, to, to, to excrete it in uh, out of our body. So, when that structure is uh, occluded or constricted, or block because of a stone that would also lead to regurgitation or backflow of your urine. Okay? And of course, the last one is your benign prostatic hyperplasia, just like I've mentioned earlier, is an example also of a condition that may lead to the backflowing of urine from the ureter into the kidney. If you want to know more about the BPH, Please do access the video sa aking channel, which I will also be posting the link sa ating description box. Okay? Now, acute renal failure has different phases. So, it depends now on the phases of the renal failure kung ano ang magiging symptoms nung sakit. Okay? Initially, okay, the onset happens um, or the initial injury happens uh, between 1 to 3 days. For example, you have the infection within uh, today. It would take about 3 days before the signs of acute renal failure would manifest. And this will now go into the next phase, which is your oliguric phase. From the word itself, oliguric. Alam natin ng oliguria is decreased urine excretion or urine production. So, your oliguric phase, from the word itself, nagkakaroon tayo ng urine output of less than 400 cc for 24 hours, okay? For 3 days or for 3, day, three, three days to 2 weeks. E, or this uh, constitute a, a urine output of less than 30 cc per hour, okay? So, ito, 400 cc per 24 hours. So, pag mas mababa sa 400 cc yung iyong urine or mas mad per 24 hours or mas mababa sa 30 cc per hour that constitute now your oligoric phase which can occur between 3 days up to 2 weeks okay this comes with other manifestations such as increased BUN or blood urea nitrogen and creatinine by the way uh, this is a clear indication that there is a failure in the urine I mean in the kidney and between these two laboratory tests, common yan na binapa-test ng doktor kapag merong possible acute renal failure, your BUN level and creatinine level. Both of them will go goes up. Okay, pero mas we give more 
uh, more justification or more importance kay creatinine. Why? Because BUN can be affected by the diet of the patient. Because the higher protein or the higher the protein uh, diet you have, the higher your BUN will be. So, affected siya ng diet. Kaya hindi siya maganda or hindi siya ganun ka accurate in terms of diagnosing ARF. Unlike sa creatinine, it is not really affected by the diet. It's affected by the ability of the urine to really um uh, strain or should I say uh, parang mag magsala. Okay, yung trabaho niya. So, the fact that the creatinine le level is increasing in your urine, it means to say, I, I mean, blood, it means to say that the kidney is no longer doing its job. Okay? Another one is edema and hypertension can also occur. This is because of the urinary retention or I mean the um the sodium retention leading now to increase uh, plasma volume. Okay? And uh, since byproduct or waste product of, of metabolism should be excreted through the urine. Okay? Ang nangyayari is uh, retention of potassium will also take place, which is your hyperkalemia. And among all the manifestations of acute renal failure, this is one of the most uh, um, deadly or should I say critical that you have to monitor because hyperkalemia may lead to uh, arrhythmias or cardiac arrhythmias that may later on lead to, lead to cardiac arrest if left untreated. Okay. Another one is your hyponatremia. Alam naman natin, hyponatremia, okay? Hyponatremia is your sodium major intravascular cations while your uh, potassium is major intracellular cations. When potassium increases in your kid uh, in your blood, alam natin magkaaway sila ng sodium. Therefore, the increased concentration of potassium in the blood would also dilute the concentration of sodium in the blood. Okay, leading now to hyponatremia or decreased sodium concentration around less than 135 mex per liter. Okay, at ang hyperkalemia nyo naman is more than uh, uh, 4.5 mex per liter. Kasi ang normal nyan is 3.5 to 4.5 lang. At yung ating uh, sodium naman is about 135 to 145. 3.5 to 4.5 Ang normal ng potassium sa dugo, 135 to 145 naman ang sodium sa dugo. So, um, hyperkalemia is more than uh, 4.5 mex per liter, indicating that the condition has, the patient has hyperkalemia, delikado na rin po yun. Okay? Another one is your hyperphosphatemia. Same thing, hyperphosphatemia, phosphate are intracellular cations. Tendency, it will also increase intravascularly during your renal failure because the kidney cannot excrete these excess uh, electrolytes. And uh, since there is a problem in the kidney, it may also lead to the uh, retention of acids, which are the electrolytes, leading now to your metabolic acidosis because the organ involved is the kidney rather than the lungs. So, that's your metabolic acidosis. If you want to know more about your uh, uh, your, uh, fluids, uh, your acid-based balance uh, concepts, you can also access my video about the discussion about FNE fluids and, ba uh, I mean, acid and base balance discussion. Okay? Now, and for the last one, uh, uh, it lasts now for one to three weeks, just like I mentioned earlier. Three, three days to two weeks, that's an average. But it can also last for one to three weeks, depending on the client's condition. Okay? So after the oligoric phase, since this condition is considered to be irreversible, the body still has the ability to recuperate and, of course, heal itself. Pwede pong gumaling yung kidney. And when the condition starts now to decline, or uh, goes back to normal, the body will also goes back to normal, including the kidney function. So, papasok na po yung tinatawag na diuretic phase. In the diuretic phase, the urine output will now reach 3 to 5 liters per day for 10 days, and elevated B and creatinine plus elevated BP is still present. Okay? But under this condition, since urine output starts now to increase, hypokalemia will also would still uh, occurs.
Okay, hypokalemia naman po ang mangyari instead of hyperkalemia because this excess potassium will already be excreted through the urine. And this may last one for one week. Okay, one week. And the last phase is gonna be your recovery phase. This is the stage wherein the kidney is already healed and was able to recuperate from the condition that causes now your ARF. Now, this would last 6 to 12 months and... Uh, though the kidneys is already in the in the recovery phase, you still need to watch out for the kidney for continuous failure, because if this happens for more, if the kidney failure happens for more than six months, it's gonna be considered as your chronic kidney failure. So while you are still in this uh, phase, okay, or while you're still recuperating from the kidney failure, uh, your patient needs to be advised to avoid nephrotoxic drugs such as your NSAIDs and some antibiotics and other drugs that can actually uh, destroy or damage your kidney. You also need uh, to watch out for signs of chronic renal failure. Uh, just like I said, your acute renal failure is a predisposition for the development of your chronic kidney, disease, uh, chronic kidney failure or renal failure. That's why you have to assess for signs of CRF if you have had acute renal failure. Okay, even though that you are already on the recovery phase. Now, what are the diagnostic findings and lab findings that the doctor may, or the physician may order and that you should be aware of as a nurse? Okay, very important po ito, lalo sa ating mga hemodialysis nurses. Okay, number one is hyperkalemia. So, you have to take note of the potassium level of the patient. Again, um, we are very particular with hyperkalemia because hyperkalemia controls now muscle contractility. And since our heart is also a muscle, it may lead to cardiac arrhythmias that may lead now later on to cardiac arrest if left untreated. So later on, sa ating medical management, actually ang focus niyan is to decrease the level of potassium in the blood, which is an emergency management, especially for patients with ARF. Okay. Another one is hyperphosphatemia. Same thing because both of these, potassium and phosphate, are intracellular cations, not intravascular. That's why we have to watch out for this one as well. Hypocalcemia can also happen. Why? Because kidney has something to do with the absorption of, of, of calcium, not only the gastrointestinal tract. Okay? May kinalaman po ang kidney sa absorption ng, hypocal ng, ng calcium natin. Therefore, if the kidney is failing, one of its function is to absorb potassium. And since the kidney is not performing its function, therefore, decrease din ang absorption natin ng calcium. That's why you have to watch out for hypocalcemia. And speaking of hypocalcemia, guys, you have to monitor for the two signs, the Shivostek sign and your Trusso signs. Your Vostek sign is sa ating uh, muka twitching and your uh, pag, uh, pag flick naman ng hand is your uh, Trusso sign. Okay? So, you have to watch out for that as part of uh, the assessment for um, hypocalcemia, alpulcalcemic patient. Next, metabolic acidosis. So, metabolic acidosis, you already know that. If you want to know more about this one, please do watch my video about the fluids and Electrolyte acid based balance discussion. Okay, metabolic acidosis because the kidney is the one responsible for the uh, compensation of this. And it, since the kidney is not compensating, it may lead to acidosis. Uh, I mean, metabolic acidosis because magkakaroon tayo ng increased concentration of byproducts of waste products. Okay, or the byproduct of metabolism, which mostly are acid by nature. Okay, so kailangan natin bantayan din yan. Also, monitor azotemia. Azotemia, as I've mentioned earlier, is the increased concentration of waste products in the blood. Okay? Or a prolonged uremic state. Pag sinabing uremic state, uremia. The, incre uh, the, the retention of waste products in the blood. So, if uremia stays for quite some time, it may lead to azotemia, which is the increased concentration of blood or uh, waste products in the blood due to metabolic digestion. Okay, proteinuria can also happen. So, proteinuria or your protein. Okay, so your protein are large molecules. Hindi rin po natin siya may lalabas. So, magkakaroon tayo ng protein retention leading now to increase um, protein content. Uh, I mean, hindi natin siya 
uh, maikikip sa body kasi nga uh, protein are supposedly not present in the urine but since the kidney is failing it can no longer filtrate or some of the uh, components that's why mairi-release siya through our uh, urine kasi nga hindi na siya na isasala through our GFR okay or sa ating glomerulus next you also monitor for urinalysis the presence of cast RBC and your WBC okay same thing with proteinuria these are large molecules that are not supposed to be present in the urine but if in case na present sila either sobrang taas nila sa dugo or sira po yung ating kidney ay hindi siya nasasalaga ano and in this case acute renal failure sira po si kidney okay Next is anemia. So anemia, why? Kidney has something to do also with the production of blood because your kidney is the one produces now your erythropoietin. Erythropoietin is responsible to the stimulation of the bone marrow to produce now your reticulocytes for the production of new blood cells. However, since the kidney is not functioning well because it's fail it is failing, therefore, the production of blood components will also be affected leading now to your anemia because of the decreased production of your erythropoietin. And elevated BUN and creatinine level would also be uh, um, assessed with this patient as just like I've mentioned earlier, BUN and creatinine is the number one test na ginagawa natin and between the two, we focus more on the creatinine because BUN is affected by diet that is high in protein compared to that of the creatinine which is solely due to the functioning of the kidney. So, mas importante si creatinine kesa kay BUN. Now, the signs and symptoms Nang acute renal failure, medyo nasabi na natin yung iba, but let me just emphasize some of it. Number one here, inability, headache, anorexia, tingling of extremities, lethargy that can progress to stupor and coma. This is because of the metabolic imbalances that are happening now inside our body because of the failing kidney. Another one is sudden dramatic drop in urinary output, which is commonly happens during the oliguric stage because the kidney is failing another one is restlessness twitching and convulsions so restlessness because of the fluids and electrolytes imbalance plus the twitching is because of your hypocalcemia just like i've mentioned earlier so twitching hypocalcemia and hypokalemia can hyperkalemia can actually lead to that skin color anemia increased bleeding time okay just like i mentioned the kidney also, our responsibility in the production of blood cells, therefore, the blood component would also be affected, hence leading to anemia and increased in bleeding time because of the uh, decreased clotting factor also. Okay, ammonia odor breath can also occur, or yung tinatawag natin, uremic breath, okay, and it can also be smelled through your perspiration, okay, or say yung pagpapawis. Uh, because that is due to the increased concentration of uh, waste products okay, in the blood. Next is generalized edema. So edema, because of the urinary retention, okay, urinary retention may in, uh, lead to increased blood volume. Increased blood volume means um, increased blood pressure as well. So hypertension can occur. Okay, and when this condition... Uh, due to the increase uh, hydrostatic pressure, the shifting of fluids now is from intravascular to interstitial space due to high permeability leading to the formation of edema. In this case, sa mga pasyente natin na may ARF is bipedal edema. And if it occurs in the lungs, we have your pulmonary edema. And if it happens in the heart, congestion will take place. Kaya nagkakaroon tayo ng congestive heart failure. Leading now to the death of the patient if the patient is left untreated. Okay, so how are we going to manage if the patient has these conditions already? Management includes correct the underlying cause. For example, if it's pre renal failure, pre renal failure, and the cause is your hypovolemia, then we have to manage hypovolemia. So if it's a uh, post renal failure or intra renal failure, uh, if it's intrarenal failure, it is due to an infection such as your glomerular or pyelonephritis. Then we have to treat the infection in the kidney. 
So if the condition is due to postrenal failure because of the black flow, we have to manage the condition that is causing the blockage. So if it's, it's, if it's BPH, then we have to manage BPH. Okay, if it's cancer, then we have to manage cancer. If it's urolithiasis, then we have to remove the stone that is blocking the ureter. Okay, another one, complete bed rest. Take note that the patient is anemic. If the patient is anemic, the patient becomes restless because of due, due to decreased oxygen concentration in the blood. Therefore, patient will also be manifesting fatigability. So, in order to conserve energy, ang pasyente natin is meron siyang activity intolerance, conserve energy, and oxygen by making the patient rest. Okay? Sa kanyang higaan, of course. Total parenteral nutrition. If necessary, if the patient is no longer feeding by a mouth, or patient is no longer receiving the enough nutrients sa ating pasyente. So, total parenteral nutrition is the introduction of Parenteral fluids, okay? Parenteral nutritional fluids into the client's system because of conditions that makes the patient unable to ingest food or consume food via mouth, okay? Okay, and digest or unable to digest now and convert these foods into usable substances. So, kailangan natin bantayan lang sa total parenteral nutrition or your hyperglycemia kasi fluids, ay fluids pa ito na mataas sa glucose. We also need to monitor for thrombosis kasi nga may mga compounds tayo na content ng parenteral na pwede mag-cause ng blockage and of course, the formation of clot or a thrombus okay, that may clog sa ating kidney ulit or sa ating puso that may lead to possible conditions such as your more kidney failure and at the same time your uh, acute, uh, acute myocardial infarction. Other one is if the condition is more on the um, infection, then we treat this with antibiotic. The doctor physician would actually order this type of drugs. Um, not to mention, basta importante po is hindi po, uh, hindi po allergic yung pasyente doon sa antibiotic na yung order ng physician. Peritoneal dialysis and hemodialysis would also, can also be done or can be also ordered by the physician, especially if the patient is already uh, developed your azotemia and your uremia and due to the high concentration of waste products to includes now your calcium kailangan alisin ito ng biglaan or ng mabilis and the patient may undergo peritoneal dialysis and hemodialysis I'll, I am going to try to make separate videos regarding peritoneal dialysis and hemodialysis sa mga sunod na videos natin okay next other management sa diet so, in terms of diet, we have to maintain a caloric intake of about 200 to 1,500 calories per day. Depends now on the doctor's order and if it's contraindicated to the patient. Another one is low protein, of course, because the patient is already having proteinuria, which may actually uh, um, uh, worsen the condition if you're going to give a diet that are high in protein. Moderate fat, about 70 to 90 grams. Controlled sodium. Controlled sodium. Though we have hyponatremia, but still sodium should be controlled. Why? Because there is already retention. Okay? So again, where sodium goes, water follows. So even though there is hyponatremia, kapag nasobrahan po ang asin, mas maraming tubig na may iiwan sa katawan. Okay? Which is not good because the, fa the kidney is already failing and unable to excrete now fluids. Hence, leading to fluid retention, it leads now to hypertension. Hindi po maganda yon. Okay? So, you have to control sodium intake. Potassium. Very important to maintain it around 1,300 to 1,090 milligram. So, you have to at least minimize the consumption of foods that is high in potassium such as your papaya, avocado and your uh, banana and other fruits that are high in potassium such as your kiwi okay because the patient is already having hyperkalemia okay water should be limited to 800 to 100 ml or 1000 ml i mean 800 to 1000 ml patient should be in strict uh, in strict ino monitoring why Take note that the kidney is failing, unable to excrete now the excess fluids, hence water should be 
Watch, water should be controlled. And when you say controlled, pag sinabi ng doktor na 800 cc only for the next 24 hours, this includes now your oral fluid intake plus the urine output. Okay, I press the IVF or intravenous fluids. Computed na po yan. Okay, calcium should be given 100 milligram. The standard actually ng calcium intake natin is 1,200 kailangan natin bigyan na at least 1,000 mg to replace the calcium because the patient is already hypocalcemic because of the kidney failure. And give foods, uh, give uh, vitamins that are low or, or do not give or low water soluble vitamins. Okay? So, dapat babaan natin ang mga, low wat na, ang mga water soluble vitamins. So, what are the water soluble vitamins? All vitamins are water soluble except ADEC. What is ADEC? A, D, E, and K. So, those are your fat soluble vitamins. So, if they are not included in ADEC, they are considered as your water soluble. Yung kanina kasi fat. So, water soluble are not ADEC. Okay? So, mag-apat na baba lang po tayo doon. Kasi nga, uh, water soluble vitamins are... Excess, uh, excess vitamins that are considered as water soluble are excreted through your kidneys. Okay, and since the kidney is failed or not able to perform its task, it's highly unlikely na may ipon. It's more likely na may ipon yung mga excess vitamins na hindi naman magagamit ng pasyente. Okay, kasi ng water soluble ito, af pag nagamit na ng pasyente yung in yung, yung desired amount of vitamins during that day the rest should be excreted. And in this case, it's less likely na mangyayaring excretion because the kidney is failing. Okay? Next is uh, avoid nephrotoxic drugs. From the word itself, nephrotoxic. So avoid drugs that can affect the kidney such as NSAIDs, antibiotics, and contrast media. Okay, contrast media are those uh, we use for diagnostic tests and for other therapies such as your RAI or radioactive iodine therapy, or if you will be performing your CT scan with contrast medium, it has iodine. This iodine uh, or this radioactive iodine that you will be consuming or that will be introduced to the patient's body during this therapy and the diagnostic test, okay, are excreted through the urine or to the kidney. However, since the patient is failing, we cannot give this type of treatment and interventions because the kidney is unable to excrete the waste products that are due to this treatment and interventions. Yung or diagnostic test, yung contrast medium. Kaya bawal po. Okay? Some antibiotics, not all, especially the treatments for the nephrolite, nephro, uh, nephritis and your glomerulonephritis. Okay? And said, such as your um Ibuprofen ay bawal din po sa ating pasyente because they are nephro nephrotoxics. You can also, the doctor would also be expected to uh, to administer or I mean to order the dopamine which are volume expanders. This is to restore, restore perfusion to the, to the client's kidney especially for a patient who has hypotensive condition such as patient with shock. Okay, kasi pag may shock ka, hypotaki-taki, hypotension means decreased tissue perfusion. Decreased tissue perfusion may lead to necrosis, hence failure. Kaya nga, example siya ng pre-renal failure. Next, loop diuretics. The patient is unable to excrete now, okay, or do the excretion through the glomerular filtration rate or your GFR. There is other way on how to bypass that through your loop of Henle. Hence, we are giving your loop diuretics to still facilitate the excretion of urine. And ang kagandahan sa loop diuretics is that it binds with potassium. Hence, when you, go, when you give loop diuretics, excretion of urine takes place in the loop of Henle together with potassium. Hence, treating now your hyperkalemia. Okay? And ACE inhibitor for hypertension if the patient is hypertensive due to Water retention, H2 blockers to prevent gastric secretions, okay, gastric secretions, and kayaxylate is to reduce potassium. So kayaxylate is actually an oral compound or substance na iniinom. This facilitates now or facilitates now the reduction or the removal of excess potassium into this from the system, okay, in the for through the gastrointestinal tract. Pag tayo ay tumatay, 
Okay, so naglalabas siya ng mas maraming potassium to treat now or manage your hyperkalemia. Sodium bicarbonate to treat acidosis is given HCO3 since the patient is having metabolic acidosis. Okay, possible nursing diagnosis guys. What are the possible nursing diagnosis for patient with ARF? Fluid volume excess related to decreased urine output, imbalanced nutrition, less than body requirements, and risk for infection. I'm sorry for the typographical error. Nawawala yung letter N. Okay? Those are the possible nursing diagnosis. But of course, the priority is gonna be fluid volume excess. Okay? So nursing gear. Just like I mentioned, monitor intake and output. When you say monitor, is strictly monitor. So you have to compute the fluids that I intake, including measurement of the oral fluids intake, including medications that I iniinom ng pasyente. You also need to monitor for the urine output strictly. Observe for oliguria followed by polyuria. So oliguria is the initial stage. Once it reaches now your oli your polyuria, that it it's already that the patient is already in your diuretic stage. Monitor the patient's weight daily, same time, every morning upon arising from bed. Why? Because this would indicate measurement of the presence of fluid retention. Also, assess for edema, fluid retention. This is due to fluid retention. So, weigh daily. Okay, kailangan bumababa ang timbang. Okay, kasi nga yung pagtaas ng timbang hindi ibig sabihin tumataba. Ibig sabihin mas maraming tubig ang naiiwan sa katawan more or less, nakakaroon ng more edema. Okay? So, yeah, and that is already a concern. Kasi kailangan mailabas yun ng katawan. Monitor electrolyte imbalance. Okay? In this case nga, mas common ng pasyente sa metabolic acidosis and also monitor for hyperkalemia, hyperphosphatemia, and your hypocalcemia. Encourage prescribed diet. What is the diet or nutritional therapy for this ARF patient? Moderate protein restriction. Okay, high carbohydrates or high caloric diet, diet and restrict potassium intake. Okay, to its minimal. Take note of the hyperkalemia, the most concern na meron tayo. Other one is assess for signs of overhydration. Okay, overhydration. What are the signs of overhydration that indicates now fluid volume exists? Presence of edema, presence of crackles, which is an indicative of pulmonary edema. Headache, distended neck pain, which is an indication of your congestive heart failure, and of course, hypertension. Please assess those, and those should be reported immediately to the physician. Provide periods of undisturbed bed rest because the patient is recuperating due to anemia, decreased oxygenation, nagkakaroon ng extreme fatigability. Protect client from injury. Why? Patient becomes dizzy. Restless and fatigue, therefore, a sudden stand may also lead to uh, orthostatic hypotension, may lead to uh, fall or injury. Okay, and observe for early signs of complications, plus, provide skin care, especially kapag nagkakaroon tayo ng uremic state, kung saan tumataas ang level ng uremia, causing now itchiness in the skin or your pruritus. Okay. So that's your uh, chronic uh, that is your uh, acute renal failure. If you do have any questions guys, again please do comment that down sa ating comment section. Please subscribe and share this video. So that is your acute renal failure. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you with our videos about chronic renal failure. Bye for now.